So in the previous video, we were exploring z squared equals 1, z cubed equals 1, z to the 4 equals 1. We found the roots, we plotted them on an Argand diagram, and we came to some conclusions about things that we were finding. Okay, and we were looking at similarities and patterns. In this video, I want to formalise the nth roots of unity so you can see where it's really coming from. And we're going to start off by looking at z to the n equals 1. And what you need to identify first and be clear on is that in order for this to be the case, for z to the n equals 1, that z must have modulus of equal to 1. Okay? Otherwise, how could z to the n be equal to 1? Okay? So, we can say that z is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. Okay? Now, if we replace the z with that in the equation, we have cosine theta plus i sine theta to the power of n is equal to 1. Then by De Moivre's theorem, you can say, well, OK, cosine of n theta plus i sine n theta must be equal to 1. OK? Now, in order for that to be the case, the real part of the left-hand side must be equal to the real part of the right-hand side. So cosine n theta must be equal to 1. And the imaginary part of the left-hand side must be the same as the imaginary part of the right-hand side. So sine of n theta must be equal to 0, because this is 1 plus 0 i. So in order for cosine to be ze uh, so, sorry, for the cosine n theta to be 1, and for the sine n theta to be 0, the angle that we're looking at must be some multiple of 2 pi, because cosine of 0, or cosine 2 pi, or cosine 4 pi, 6 pi, 8 pi, or cosine minus 2 pi, okay? They're all equal to 1. Sine of minus 2 pi, 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, they are all equal to 0, okay? So this is going to happen when the n theta is equal to some multiple of 2 pi, where k here is an integer. So what we can then say is that the theta must be equal to 2 pi k over n. OK? So theta must be equal to 2 pi k over n. Now what we've said there is that this is true for any integer, which it is. OK? However, the problem that you're going to face is that although this is true for any integer, we don't need to look at all possible integer values of k. So when k is 0, right, when k is 0, theta is going to be 0, OK? When k, so let's say uh, we look at an example, right? So let's look at uh, n being equal to 4, for example, OK? So when we had z to the 4 is equal to 1, we got four roots. 1, minus 1, i, and minus i, OK? Now, if we're going to say that um, n is 4, in this case, OK, and k could be any integer, let's just start at 0, so when k is 0, theta will be 2 pi times 0 over 4, so 0. OK, and that's going to give us our first um, root when theta is 0. So when theta is 0, we get cosine of 0 plus i sine 0, and so z equals 1. Then when k is equal to 1, we're going to get 2 pi times 1 over 4. So that's going to be pi over 2. So cosine of pi over 2 plus i sine pi over 2. Um, now, cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. And so you just get 0 plus i times 1, so i. So uh, that was pi over 2, wasn't it? So z is equal to i. OK, what about when k is equal to 2? Well, you get 2 pi times 2, so 4 pi divided by 4, so pi. 
Now, if theta is pi, you get cosine of pi, which is equal to um, zero. Sorry, when cosine of pi is equal to minus one, rather. Sine of pi is equal to zero, so you just get minus one. Then when k is three, you get two pi times three, so six pi divided by four. So um, six pi over four, so three pi over two. So then cosine of three pi over two, just think of the cosine curve, um, we're back up to zero, aren't we? And sine of three pi over two, uh, we're down at minus one, so that's minus i. Okay, so we've got our four roots. If we go further, so if we look at k is equal to four, then you get two pi times four over four, so you get theta is two pi. And when theta is 2 pi, you get cosine of 2 pi plus i sine 2 pi. Cosine of 2 pi is 1, i sine 2 pi, 0. And so you get back to z is equal to 1. And so you get repetitions. You're going to go round in like a, a clockwise motion, right? Um, um, like, like modular arithmetic. You're going to be just keep on going round repeating the same values. So we don't need... To go any further, we only need to go uh, from 0 up to 1 less than the value of n. So uh, we can say that z is equal to cosine of 2 pi k over n plus i sine 2 pi k over n um, for k equals 0, 1, 2, etc., up until 1 less than the value of n, OK? Because otherwise, you're going to get into repetitions. And so you can see here that there are n roots, OK? Because each one of those will be distinct. And hence, you have the nth roots of unity. OK? Now, um, what we often do at this point is we identify um, as omega, so Greek letter omega, looks like a W, OK? The Greek letter omega is used to represent the root with the smallest positive argument, OK? So omega is the root with the smallest possible argument. OK, so what we would say there is that uh, z uh, is going to be equal to, or sorry, omega, rather, apologies. Omega is equal to cosine of 2 pi over n, so this is when k is equal to 1, right, plus i sine of 2 pi over n. So if I was to write down omega to the power of k, then we would have cosine of 2 pi over n plus i sine 2 pi over n to the power of k. And of course, by De Moivre's theorem, you can write that cosine of 2 pi k over n plus i sine 2 pi k over n. So the nth roots of unity are, OK, so We've got, first of all, don't forget that when k is 0, you're going to have uh, 1. So 1 is your first root, OK? Then, omega, OK, because that's the first, uh, the smallest, one of the smallest possible arguments. So that's your first one after that. Then you can have omega squared, omega cubed, etc., 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 up until, including omega to the power of n minus 1. 
okay? So there. So these are your roots of unity written in the form of omega. Now, what you might notice there is that these um, are forming a geometric sequence. Now, as a geometric sequence, you can then think, OK, well, what if then you looked at the geometric series of adding them all together? So if you had 1 plus omega plus omega squared plus omega cubed plus dot 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 plus omega to the n minus 1, OK? Well, considering this as a geometric series, A, the first term is 1, the common ratio is omega, and the number of terms you have is n, OK? So that means that the sum to n terms here of all of those will be equal to a, which is 1, times by omega to the power of n, take away 1 over omega, take away 1. OK, so this is using the sum to n formula. So omega to the n, take away 1 over omega take away 1. Now remember, right, omega to the power of n is going to be equal to 1. So this has got to be equal to 0. OK? So actually, the sum of all of your roots of unity must equal 0. OK, the sum of the roots must equal zero. So what you're seeing here, right, is that the roots of unity, if formed on a, an argand diagram, will be uh, complex numbers that are have the length modulus of 1, OK? So they all have modulus 1 and can be inscribed on the unit circle going round and form a polygon of degree n, a regular polygon centred at the origin, OK? Now, this is the algebra that what is working behind um, what we were seeing when we were investigating z squared equals 1, z cubed equals 1, z to the 4 equals 1 in the previous video. OK? Um, so you can see all of the mechanics behind it.